Hello folks and welcome to a somewhat belated RPG update video. In this video, I want to be covering what I have got up to so far. You may have seen some of the updates on social media, but the main gist of it is inventory, item drops and stuff like that. So what we've got is a drag and drop inventory, drop items out of that inventory, pick items up, all of that working with the save system as I'm just going to show you right now. Let's take a look at the progress, shall we? So here is my character and what we've got here on the floor for my character to have a look at is a pickup. I'll get to that in a second because I'm going to go into my inventory UI and you can see here that we've got empty inventory slots. We have got slots with items in them and you can see hover tooltips happening when we go over them. And I can drag and drop these items around. I can swap them by dragging them over each other and all that good stuff. And I can drop it out of the inventory too. So if I, there's a little bit of a movement bug there, but as you can see, we're going to be able to fix that sort of thing. And you can see I dropped the hammer, no longer in my inventory, now on the floor. I can go over and pick up the sword and the hammer, and I will have both of those dropped into my inventory. And the really cool thing is that all of this works with the save system. So if I go and leave a trail of items, so I'll leave the sword over here, I'll leave the hammer over here, and then I hit save and quit and then come back to this, then what we should see is that in my inventory I still have the sword exactly in the slot that it was left in and all these items have been put back on the floor, they've been spawned back on the floor and in fact that initial item that I picked up has remained picked up as well. So what we've got here is a full kind of system of picking up and dropping that works with the save system and it is the basis for which we're going to be able to use things like potions, we're going to be able to equip things to the inventory which is currently not working but will be working very soon. So where do we start with understanding how this system works? The root of this system is on the player itself. So if we go and have a look at the player, we used to have an inventory script that Ben had written before this. And now I've repurposed this inventory script. It still has this has item delivered thing for quests and stuff, but it's not really being used anymore. The main thing is its inventory size and the inventory contents. So the inventory size actually dictates how many items we have in that UI. But let's go and have a look at the script itself and see if we can divine its main functionality. So here is the script. And okay, so let's have a look at the state. First of all, we've got coin. That's not very important. What is important, however, is we've got these inventory slots. That's an array of inventory slots. And this, which we're going to talk about a little bit later when I tell you about how the save system works. The main thing is these inventory slots. What's an inventory slot? It's actually defined down here. It really is very simply, here is the struct, it really is just a thing that can contain an item pointer. This item pointer might be null, but the point is these slots will be there whether it's empty or not. So you can see this initial setup of the first items that we have were in slot 0 and 3, and we've got this system again, this get ID from database. You may have seen this already, I uh, can't remember where exactly we had it, but the idea is that you have this inventory item list, and this is a simple uh, as basically a list of inventory items, and it is, I've called this asset the main index, but it obviously has to be backed by a scriptable object. And the reason for this is so that the inventory can point out to this, and this can point out to all the scriptable items, which means that they get loaded into the game when packaging. Otherwise, if there's no references from a scene file that we're packaging, things don't get loaded in. So this is one way of making sure all your assets get pulled into the scene, is by having these kind of index scriptable objects. So that's just a little bit of a hack there. And each inventory item has got a UUID assigned to it, like this. And so that means that we can get the items from that list by UUID. So this one of them's the hammer, one of them's a sword. I can't tell from the ID. Obviously, I'm not a robot. So what else have we got in here? A few extra things, just like things for adding into the slot, first empty item, dropping items out of the slot, and so on and so forth. But we'll get to that in a second. The other big part of this is the UI element. So 
in our camera UI at the moment, it needs a bit of uh, shaking up here because they're <laughs> We're getting quite a flat structure at the moment. But we have got a stats canvas, if you remember. We've got lots of nested prefabs going on here because I'm using the Unity beta with nested prefabs and they are super cool. So this is our stats canvas, or what I've chosen to call our stats canvas. And inside the stats canvas, we have got another prefab called the inventory. And inside that inventory prefab, it just looks like this. It's a list of items. And I believe somewhere here, yeah, on the in inventory kind of parent to all these images, we have got a inventory UI script. And the inventory UI script, its job is basically if I, oops, I head back, oh dear, found my way back eventually, it's if I go to the inventory UI, what we see it doing is it'll find the player, find its inventory, and notice here I've got an event on the player inventory that notifies when it gets updated. That's implemented using something called a C sharp event, uh, and it uses one of the default event types called action. You can look both of those keywords up for C sharp if you're more interested in finding out about that. But basically, what it means is I can call that event from within player inventory and I can register to do things when that event is triggered. So in this player inventory UI, what we do is we redraw every time the inventory is updated, and that means we destroy all of the children and instantiate them new from this prefab. The prefab is this one here, the inventory slot, which is kind of showing up a bit funky, but that's what the inventory slot looks like. As you can imagine, it is basically this outline and then an item inside that outline. And the scripts that are relevant here are we've got a inventory UI slot, a tooltip spawner, which is responsible for those tooltips we were seeing. And inside the inventory UI slot, we have got a reference to this script, which is the inventory item UI. And the inventory item UI does a bunch of stuff, mostly around drag and drop. So we'll have a look at that when we talk about the drag and drop. So what's going on basically is we've got an inventory, an inventory UI, and so let's show you the inventory and the inventory UI. The inventory UI is responsible for grabbing items from the inventory and spawning enough prefabs to represent every one of the slots, basically. And then how do we actually deal with the inventory? How do we update contents in the inventory? That was all done via drag and drop. And there's basically three things going on with drag and drop that are of interest to us. We have got a begin drag handler, a drag handler and an end drag handler. Now this allows us to do a few things. The on begin drag, the on drag and the on end drag. And that's going on in the inventory item UI, which I believe is this thing. No, that's the inventory slot UI. So the inventory item UI is this thing. The inventory slot UI has also got some code in it. So let's have a look at both of those together. I'm just trying to remember which one does which. So one is an I item holder. That's something that I've defined, we'll talk about later. And we've got a drop handler. So over here we had drag handlers. And in here we have a drop handler, which basically means if I'm the slot that's receiving the drag. Let's have a look at the lifetime. So if I click and start dragging on an item, which is this sub game object of the slot, then I will get a begin drag handler call. And then when I get this begin drag handler call, I record my start position and my original parent. And then I set my parent to being the basically the canvas, the root canvas parent, so that I can display it over the top of everything so it doesn't get blocked by other items. Let me show you what I mean. The idea being when I drag it here, it's not going underneath on any of the slots, not going underneath any of these player, elements or underneath any of the other UI, which is what we want to happen. And then we have to block raycasts false so that basically the raycasting continues to happen so that we get the other types of event like the drop event. Then on drag, basically this happens every frame while you are dragging, we just update our position of that element, which is what we were seeing it moving around the screen. And then we have our on end drag now basically this one gets called if we didn't drop onto anything. 
that wants to receive the drop. So if we didn't call the iDrop handler, this one gets called. And basically this allows us to reset back to our original parent, the original inventory slot UI that is the parent of this. It sets it back to its original position and sets the raycast back, basically doing the opposite of begin drag. And if we aren't over the UI, so we've dropped it outside of the UI bounds, so let me just bring it up again. So if we drop it outside of here, not on the UI but on the world, then we discard the item. We tell the slot to discard the item. So what's the slot doing when we drop, for example? So if something drops onto the slot, well, we get hold of the item that was dropped and we pop the item from the inventory, replace the item in the slot. So we take the item we've just received and put it in the slot, our current slot. And if that has replaced an item, then we have to swap them around. So that's basically what this logic is doing. It's swapping items around if they need swapping around. And the discard item just calls drop item on the inventory. So we've got a few functions here that we now know about in the inventory that are kind of interesting. We've got this drop item, and what that does is it pops it from the slot, and it then spawns a pickup, like so and spawn pickup is defined down here. We've got replace items in slot, which is really quite simple logic. We've got old items, new items. It notifies of the inventory having been updated and returns the old item that was replaced. And there's some useful methods in here. I'll let you read those if you're interested. But that's the logic of the drag and drop. And let's have a little look now. The save system is quite interesting because we've had to do something a little bit interesting here. You may have seen my save video. I'm going to link it against this lecture because it's quite relevant. Basically, the idea is anything that exists in the scene has got that we want to save typically has, let's go and find the scene in fact. So the player's a good example. They've got this savable script somewhere, savable entity. This has a UUID. So what it does is it goes through all the components that are savable that we have I've basically got an iSavable interface, and it attempts to save them against this UUID. This system relies on the items all existing in the world in the scene. So it's fine if we want to kill off an enemy because it existed already, and then we decide that actually it was killed in the save game so we can kill the enemy. What if there's an item that has been dropped, but it wasn't there at the beginning? That's the problem we have with this type of save and load with an inventory because I can go along to any place in the map and drop a new item. That's creating a new item that wasn't there when the scene loaded. So the system that we've, I've put in place is to say the inventory that dropped the item is responsible for dropping the item again when you load a new scene, when you are reloading a scene. So let's have a look at that. That's kind of what's happening. We've got this capture state and restore state. And one thing is it's, it, that's fairly easy is how to capture the inventory state. You just go through all the slots and save their item IDs. And you can go through and grab the item IDs again when you're restoring the state. And you can grab them from that inventory list asset that I was telling you about, that index item. So that's fairly straightforward. But the hard bit is the capturing the drop state. So that's where I had this list of dropped items. If we have a look at where that dropped items list is being used, every time we spawn a pickup by dropping an item, we add it to the dropped items list. That means that we're keeping track of everything we have created by spawning. That means when we go to our capture drop state, what we're going to do here is go through that list of dropped items list and we will add it, basically. Say, this was the item's ID that we dropped. This is the item's position that we dropped. Please go ahead and do recreate that when we're restoring the state. So when we restore the state, we go through, and I haven't refactored this out into a separate method yet, but what we go through is we go through all the dropped items that we saved, and we respawn them. So it's basically making, as I said, the inventory responsible. So a little bit more information about how this inventory setup is laid out. 
because there is some extra complexity in there. If we have a look at the inventory, there's a whole bunch of different types of item. The core of it is the inventory item scriptable object. And you can see there's a bunch of stuff here like rarity, base costs. I haven't really started using any of this yet, but I just had a bit of a brain dump about rarity and things like that. And we've got descriptions and display names, which are being used in our tooltips. But the really interesting thing is the pickup, which is another class. The pickup is basically this. It is a component, but it is really the root of a prefab. So if I go and have a look at some of the items I've got, I'll go look at the main index and, for example, the Bastard Sword. And the Bastard Sword has got a pickup. If I follow the link to the pickup, it's actually a prefab. So what we've got is basically a positioning of a sword asset such that it looks good when you place it on the ground and it has this pickup script attached to it. And that basically allows us to do clever things like collect it uh, and it also has its own save and restore in case you created it in the world then it needs to remember to destroy itself if it has already been picked up and things like that. Uh, so that's the pickup that relates to the inventory item. And so there's lots of subclasses to the inventory item, by the way. Things that specialize it, such as the equipable item. That's one that eventually we're going to be able to put into the equipment slots. We're going to have a usable item as well, which is something that we can use like a potion that we can equip down in the action bar down the bottom here. If I hit play again, an equipable item will be able to go in this bottom bar down there. So there's a few expansions here that have not really been used to their fullest. Hopefully in an upcoming video, I will show you how that works in more detail. Also, we have a weapon item, which is basically a subset of an equipable item and does more things like that. So the final little addition to show you is that tooltip script that I teased you with. When we hover over something, it creates a tooltip. How does that work? Well, it's actually fairly straightforward. Let me load it up. So it's the item tooltip spawner and the item tooltip CS. So the item tooltip spawner has a link to the prefab, which it has a script of item tooltip type. And what we do is we basically, when the pointer enters a spawner, which in this case is the inventory item, so it is this thing here, and no, in fact, I think it's actually the item itself. Then when we enter that, what we're going to go and do is find our root canvas, instantiate a tooltip prefab at the root canvas so that it can hover over everything. We give it a title and a body, and then we position the tooltip, which is the clever bit of logic. Basically, the tooltip, if it's on the lower half of the screen, will go above. If it's on the upper half of the screen, it will go below. And if we put it all the way over to the right, which I can't do in the current layout, it's going to go over to the right and if it's over on the right side of the screen, it goes to the left so that we all can always see the tooltip no matter how close to the borders we get. And there's a bit of logic in here, but I'm not going to go into detail as to how we select the right border and the right corner to display that to. And obviously on exit, we clear the tooltip, which involves destroying said tooltip. So that's that. And we've obviously got the tooltip prefab as well. So if I showed you, if we go over to the camera UI, open up the inventory slot, then you can see that it's got this tooltip spawner. It's on the slot, in fact. And that's got the link to the prefab, which is this item tooltip prefab. And the item tooltip tip prefab's nothing too special. As you can see, it has that script on it, which is the item tooltip. And that's just there to link things up, make it easy to set the title and body using Text Mesh Pro. Cool. Phewey! Well, that was a long update and I did warn you I've been working on a lot of stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. Give me a comment as well to say what you enjoyed or didn't enjoy and what you're looking forward to seeing in the RPG when it finally comes out, which will hopefully be early next year. So hopefully you enjoyed that update and I hope the next one won't be as long in the making for next week. Now, that was a lot of hopes in that sentence, so hopefully I'll see you next time.